Hi, I'm Dave with Kids in Character, and thanks for joining us again for our fire prevention tips video. The fire that started in my home started in my garage. In fact, right here in this corner of the garage, that's where I set about six 9-volt batteries that I was going to recycle. They had been in my smoke detectors, and I knew I shouldn't throw them away, so I set them in a sack and was going to take them to recycling. When one of the batteries shorted out, it ignited the shelves and the wall here, and eventually burned down my entire house. The tip that we talked about in the first video is to never put batteries in the trash or in recycling without taping the ends with electrical tape. That's my first tip. I want to remind you how important that is. Get tape on all of your batteries. Please take some time and check your houses now and ask your friends and loved ones to do the same. Look for batteries that you have in drawers or loose anywhere and get tape over the ends. This applies to new batteries and old batteries. As I said, the batteries that caused the fire in my home had been in our fire detectors, and our smoke detectors rather, for over a year. Make sure they're secured properly with electrical tape. The next thing I want to talk to you about is what you store in your garage. If you're like me, I've saved every spare part and every paint can and every partially used bottle of motor oil and everything else over the years. As you can see, the shelves in my garage were just lined with cans many of them with flammable fluids in them. Ask yourself how much you, you really need all of this stuff. My advice is thin down because everything that's here is fuel for a fire. Get rid of what you don't need and ask yourself if you really need that quarter can of varnish from the project you just finished. I'd recommend dispose of them uh, because everything that you have, again, just provides fuel. Next thing I'd like to talk to you about is if you're storing things like this, in, especially in southern states, many of you are going to have water heaters in your garage. And this is something you need to realize. If you have an open source of flame, that's your ignition source. You cannot store flammable chemicals, anything that has gases, in the same room that you have a flame source. So if your water heater is in your garage, you should not have your paints and varnishes and everything else out there with that water heater. Get them out of there and do it today, okay? Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is a heat detector in your garage. Many of you have smoke detectors in your home, devices that look like this. And you should. You should have smoke detectors uh, by every bedroom on every level of your home. And uh, I'd encourage you to do that. But many of us don't have anything in our garages, which is kind of ironic because all of the most flammable things that we have in our home, we typically store in our garage. Now, a smoke detector may give you too many false alarms because of project work you do out here or your cars or, or whatever else, but there is a device that's made that's called a heat detector. They're more expensive, and trust me, they're worth every penny. A heat detector would have bought me time because it was several minutes before the smoke alarms inside of my house went off. In fact, I had discovered the fire myself before they went off. But by that point, the fire was too hot in my garage to stop. So smoke detectors inside your home won't help you for a garage fire. Go ahead and spend the money and get a heat detector. Many people have said to me that they're very sorry for what happened with our loss in this fire. But I really view it differently. For me, Thursday, April 21st was a very lucky day. Because I walked out of this house alive. And I got all of my animals out. I couldn't ask for more than that. Everything else is just stuff and it can be replaced. But while we're talking about the process afterwards, I do want to give you a couple of tips about insurance and inventorying your house. First is, know what your insurance policy is. We're fortunate, we were fully covered. But if you haven't reviewed your policy in a while and you don't know what your coverage is, more than likely the value of your home has changed. Make sure you have the coverage you need. In a case like this, temporary housing has been a very important thing for us and our policy has provided for that. I'd suggest that you make sure you have it. But the other tip I want to give you is the process of making a claim on your contents. Today we're sifting through all of this trying to determine what it was and inventory it. Before it burns, I suggest you go through your house with a video camera or a regular camera and take pictures of everything. Store them off-site, put them on a CD or whatever, and send them to a relative to keep. But in the case of a fire, looking back at those photographs or those videos will help you remember what was in your garage, because as you can see, what's left is pretty much indecipherable. I want to thank you for joining us for our fire safety tips and our prevention videos. 
Uh, I want to leave you with one final thought, and that is that no matter what you've lost, the only thing that really matters is your family. And if you have that, you have everything. All of these things can be replaced. So when that dispatcher tells you to get out of the house, get out of the house. Don't worry about what you're losing. Keep your family. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dave with Kids in Character.